Welcome back. I want to talk about using a log collector with Microsoft Cloud App Security and taking data logs from a firewall or a web proxy and feeding that into MCAS so you can do SaaS discovery and see what cloud apps are in use in the environment. So in this video, we're going to focus on designing and deploying a log collector for MCAS. So let's take a look. First, let's jump into five methods to inject cloud discovery data into Microsoft Cloud App Security or MCAS. Option one is through the snapshot report. This is where you take a single log file from a firewall or proxy, upload it to MCAS via the web portal. Option two is the preferred method. This is where you use Microsoft Defender for Endpoint running on Windows 10 devices, either on network or off network, and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint will automatically upload that discovery data to MCAS without any additional infrastructure and minimal configuration. Option three is if I'm running Zscaler, iBoss, Karata, or Menlo Security Secure Web Gateways, those providers have built-in integrations with Microsoft Cloud App Security to automatically upload that discovery data. Option four is through the REST API built into MCAS. And option five is what we're gonna talk about today. This is using a log collector that's running Windows or Linux, and it's actually running Docker, and it will automatically upload those logs to Microsoft Cloud App Security. Now it can run on-premises or in Azure. You could have multiples of these. It just kind of depends on your situation, but it's gonna collect those logs, uh, either using syslog or FTP from those firewalls, and it's going to automatically send them off to the service to get processed and display that beautiful dashboard you see on the right with all the analysis. Now, if I'm already collecting firewall logs with my security information event management system, my SIM, then I can leverage the log collector to tap into that SIM and pull that data. I wanna be very clear about this. This is only used for discovering cloud apps in use in the environment. You're not going to be uploading audit logs or any kind of event logs or anything like that. This is simply used to see what apps are in use in the environment by looking at the firewall logs. Okay, so let's jump into how does a log collector actually work. A log collector works by receiving logs over syslog or FTP from any firewalls or proxies in, within the enterprise. Each log is automatically processed, compressed, and transmitted to MCAS or Microsoft Cloud App Security. FTP logs are uploaded to MCAS after the file finished the FTP transfer to the log collector. For syslog, the log collector writes the received logs to the disk. Then the collector uploads the file to Microsoft Cloud App Security when the file size is larger than 40 kilobytes. After a log is uploaded to Cloud App Security, it's moved to a backup directory. Whenever the log collector disk space is full, the log collector drops new logs until it has more free disk space. You'll receive a warning on the log collectors tab in the MCAS portal. Now, a very important note is that the log collector will compress data before it's uploaded. Outbound traffic is about 10% the size of the original log. Okay, so what are the prereqs for this? Well, logs must be forwarded in their original format, untouched. They must either be sent over a syslog or FTP. The more verbose, verbose the data in the log, the better visibility in MCAS, the more analysis we can get out of it. So we want things like obviously the source IP, date, timestamp, destination IP, destination URL, um, domain, all of those types of basic things. But if you can crank up that verbose logging, that's gonna give us a lot more information. It's also recommended to ensure the log contains upload and download transaction sizes, usernames if you can, and the target URL. Again, the more verbose, the better. And I'll explain more why later in another video why that upload and download sizes are so important. Log events aren't more than 90 days old, so don't try to forward anything that's more than 90 days. The log file is valid and includes outbound traffic information, and log data, supports, su log data source is supported. Now, we'll come back to support here in just a moment, but I want to talk about network requirements. To enable cloud discovery features using a log collector and detect shadow IT in the organization, you need to make sure that the log collector is allowed to receive inbound FTP and syslog traffic, allow the log collector to initiate outbound traffic to the MCAS portal on 443. I have some additional URLs here that the log collector has to be able to communicate with. And there's some additional articles down here at the bottom, two bullet points you'll want to make sure you understand in terms of network requirements. Now, what are the supported firewalls and proxies that you can feed data into Cloud App Security? Well, I want to be very uh, clear with you on this. Uh, this is 
continually uh, being added to. But here's a list of firewalls and proxies that you that we have pre-built uh, log parsers for. But if it's not on this list, then you can also uh, submit in just a generic format like Ceph or Leaf or W3C. Or if you can't do that, you can use our custom parser to custom map the fields like you see over here on the right side. So if it's not on that list of supported firewalls and proxies, but you can use the custom parser or the generic format, try to do that as well. Now, let's dive more into what exactly is a log collector. Well, I talked about before, it's a Docker server that runs on Windows, Ubuntu, Red Hat Enterprise, or CentOS. It could be located on-premises or in Azure. It has to have at least two CPUs, at least four gigs of RAM, and at least 250 gigabytes of disk space. Now there's additional requirements based on the OS that you choose to deploy with. Here are some links to the documentation where you can read more about that. In terms of performance, the log collector can successfully handle log capacity of up to 50 gigs per hour. The main bottlenecks in this process are network bandwidth. Obviously your upload speed is gonna make a, a big consideration here. Um, IO performance of the virtual machine itself uh, that determines the speed at which logs are written to the log collector's disk. So the log collector has a built-in safety mechanism that monitors the rate at which logs arrive and compares it to the upload rate. In cases of congestion, the log collector starts to drop log files. If your setup typically exceeds 50 gigs per hour, it's recommended that you split the traffic between multiple log collectors. So this is the kind of design consideration I want you to think about. If more than 10 data sources, again, consider splitting the sources among multiple log collectors. Okay, so make sure you, uh, you study that slide. Now I put links in here for step-by-step -step instructions on how to deploy this. What I wanna do now is switch into demo mode, and I'm gonna show you how to deploy Docker on Linux in Azure, because it's really easy, and we're gonna use that to set up our log collector. So let's take a look. As I mentioned, there's instructions on how to do this using Docker on Windows, Docker on Linux, and then using Docker on Linux and Azure. I'm gonna use this method because for purposes of our demo, this is gonna be the easiest. Now, I am gonna only use this over regular FTP, not secure FTP. Um, in an enterprise environment, you might even have a, a VNet uh, that's maybe an extended back down on-premises. Uh, regardless of your networking topology, we're gonna to make this easy for the demo. Um, the other reason why I'm using Docker on Linux and Azure is because when you use Docker on Windows, you have to be signed in for the Docker instance to collect logs. So I don't wanna do that. So I wanna use Docker on Linux and Azure. As I scroll through this, this will walk me through how to set this up. Uh, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go down to section two, deployment of your virtual machine. Now I've already configured this and set up here in my Azure portal. Uh, this is running uh, Ubuntu and it's got um, two CPUs assigned to it with eight gigabyte, gigabytes of RAM and the B2MS uh, Azure size. It's got SSH enabled on it. In addition, I had to open up some additional ports here as well. Now these ports are covered in the instructions right here, so make sure you allow those ports uh, regardless if the firewall is on-premises or in Azure. Now once I've added those inbound rules, uh, because I'm using Ubuntu, I'm gonna choose the tab here for Ubuntu and we're gonna start configuring the Linux VM for this. So the first thing we're gonna do is change our root privileges using sudo-i. Now I'm connecting using PowerShell. Maybe I might do a video here in the future on how this works over PowerShell, but for now I'm already connected. So let's jump in. Now I've already done this, but I'm gonna run for a person of the demo, sudo-i to elevate our privileges. And then let's just go ahead and clear the screen. Let's go back to the instructions. Now I'm running a later version of Ubuntu, so I'm not gonna run this. So I'm gonna actually install Docker Engine Prerex, and we're just gonna go through and run these lines. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And then grab this line here. All right, perfect. And then now that we got the prereqs installed, we can verify that the fingerprint UID is docker at docker.com. So let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, this is pretty straightforward. Docker at docker.com. All right. And then now let's 
install Docker itself. So we're just going to run it line by line. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Let's actually, you know what? Let's just clear our screen and start over. There we go. I always like to clear nice and fresh. And so this is going to take a little bit. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll come back when it's finished. All right. And let's just run line by line. And now we're going to install Docker. There we go. Now I'm remoted into that VM in Azure, uh, and I'm just uh, SSH'd in, if you will. And so this always takes a little bit of time. I, I'm not much myself of a Linux expert <laughs> by any means. I know enough to be dangerous, but for me, this is a, a growth area that I'll probably do some more videos on as I learn. Uh, but this is really easy to get the log collector stood up, as you can see. So, okay, it's finished installing. So now we just need to test the Docker installation. So there it goes. And uh, Docker is working successfully. Perfect. All right. So now we need to go back to MCAS here and we need to start configuring MCAS. So let's switch over there and start there. Okay, so let's take a look at setting up our data sources. I'm just going to go to the gear icon with an MCAS and click on log collectors and then start with this first tab, data sources. So we're going to add a data source. I'm going to call this Palo Alto Firewalls and the source is going to be Palo Alto right there. Now later I'm going to grab this sample log and I'm going to FTP it to the log collector and that's how we're going to test this. Now notice the receiver type. Uh, for purposes of my lab and my demo here, I'm just gonna choose FTP. If this was production, I probably wanna do FTPS. Uh, I could also do syslog as well. It's kind of up to you and how you wanna design this. Uh, but for now, we're gonna choose FTP. Uh, I'm not going to anonymize the private information. Um, I'll do another video on what that means later. But for simplicity of demos, we're gonna uncheck that and click add data source. Now we're gonna go to the log collector tab and we're gonna actually create the log collector. So this is where I'm going to give it the name of my log collector. So I'm just going to copy directly out of the Azure portal here. Uh, the name was MCAS log collector. So we're just going to do that. Uh, host IP address or the fully qualified name. Pretty easy. I'm just going to copy the IP address. And then this is where we add our data sources. And click on create. Okay, so now we need to, now that we've installed Docker on that VM, we now need to tell it, you know, how to be a log collector. So we're gonna switch back to the instructions and we're gonna scroll down here and this is where we're gonna follow the instructions. So first we need to run uh, this command to deploy the log collector. But you don't wanna run this command because this is more generic. We need to run the command directly from MCAS. So here's the command it generated for me. And uh, if you scroll through this, it's got the IP address and everything that we need for it to know how to be a log collector. So let's copy that and go over to our SSH session and run that command. Well, if my copy and paste wants to work, try that one more time. There we go. And we'll give this a few moments to cook. Okay, so now that that's complete, let's go back to the instructions and okay, now to verify the log collector is running properly, run the following command. All right, so we're just going to copy that and paste that. And then my log collector name was MCAS log collector. Oh, not found. What I do wrong? Oh, I know what. I need to include sudo. Nope, maybe not. It's Linux and Linux is case sensitive. So there's the right command and there you go. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, you can see here that it uh, looks like we're running successfully 
and uh, here's kind of the event log and uh, looks like we're we're good to go services are started all right perfect so now let's go back to the instructions and then this is where I need to configure my on-premises environment so if we go back to the MCAS portal I need to go tell my Palo Alto firewalls to send logs over FTP to this path and here's the FTP username and password to be used so I'm just gonna copy uh, that actually, you know what? We're gonna do good IT best practices here, and we're gonna take a screenshot of this uh, that I will save for later when we go to test this. All right, so Docker is up and running successfully. So now let's test it. Okay, so if we go back to the MCAS portal and refresh the page, you can see now that, that log collector is connected, uh, but there's no data uh, being sent to it, so it's gonna show that there's no data that's been received yet. So now let's jump in and start sending data to it and watch what happens. I'm gonna use a, a web FTP client to be able to upload a firewall log to the log collector. So we're gonna use file stash to do this. Now I'm already FTP'd in using the username and password that was provided to me. So remember I took that screenshot. Uh, down at the bottom of that screenshot, you could see the username is discovered and then here's this nice password. And then once I'm remoted in over FTP, there's the machine name and the directory I need to upload those logs to. Now, again, if this was production, I would be using probably SFTP and I'd be doing a few other things to secure this, but this is just a demo. So we're already remoted in. So let's go to the PA firewalls directory, like the instructions told us, and now we're ready to drop a file in there. So I have a sample firewall log. Now to show you how I'm gonna get it, let's go over to Cloud App Security and let's go to Discover and go to Create Snapshot Report. And this is where we can choose all of our different types of firewalls. So we're gonna scroll down and choose Palo Alto and then View and Verify. Remember I showed you this earlier? Here's the sample log you can download. And so I'm just gonna download that. And here's what the sample log will look like, right? Has all sorts of great data in there for us. So I'm just going to take that log and I'm gonna FTP it to the log collector. So. Let's go ahead and drag and drop this guy over and it will be FTP'd. So we'll give that a moment to run. Now, remember what I told you before, it takes a while for it to process the log, depending on how large the log is or set of logs. And then once it's done processing, it removes the log. So let's let this cook for a little bit. We'll pause the video and we'll come back in a few moments and we'll see what happens. Okay. And you can see the file has now been removed. And so that tells me it's done processing. So let's go back to the Cloud App Security portal and under settings, under data sources, notice I have two uploaded logs because I've done this twice now. And if I'm gonna go to log collectors, notice the status is connected, data is successfully being uploaded from all linked data sources. And I could see the last date and time, which that's correct. And then if we go over to the cloud icon and click on dashboard and change our continuous report to PA firewalls, there's the data. And I can click on the discovered apps tab and there's all the data from that log file. Pretty cool, huh? Now, the way I created the continuous reports is I just went to settings and then I went down here to continuous reports and I created one just for Palo Alto firewalls just so I can do this demo for you. And we just switched the reports here to PA firewalls. All right, well, there's not a whole lot to it to deploy a log collector. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. I enjoy doing this with uh, Docker on Linux because it's all command line driven. It's pretty easy to copy and paste those commands like you saw. But hey, if you wanna use Docker on Windows, you could do that as well. Or if you have other Linux distros, uh, you could use that as well. Just make sure you meet those requirements. Uh, okay, folks, well, Hopefully you found some value in this. I always enjoy making them, so please give me a thumbs up because it does help me out. And we'll see you all in the next video. Take care.